Individuals, Archon Delane. I'll tell you, Delane is the most trustworthy cuss you could ever work with. Why? Because he always makes good on his threats. Anyone else tells you that they're gonna cut off your index fingers and hammer them into your sinuses with your own severed foot, you know it's just bluster. But if Delane tells you that, you know he'll do exactly what he says, to the letter. He wants people to be afraid of him, and that means he keeps his promises. You gotta respect that. Mantle Hoek, arms trader. Archon Delane is the head of the Kimo crew, a powerful criminal syndicate. He refers to himself as the Pirate King, a title not recognized by any government. Delane's early life is not documented, and there are competing legends of his origin. Some believe he grew up in a drug den on one of the frontier worlds where he learned to fight. Other stories have him working as a bouncer in the brothel where he was born, or training as a grease monkey at an orbital shipyard that hosted clandestine arena fights after hours. What is certain is that Delane challenged and slaughtered the reigning pirate lord of the Kumo crew when he was only 15. The title of pirate lord is only transferred on the death of the incumbent, either to a nominated successor or to the victor of a ritual challenge. According to tradition, the pirate lord must honor any challenge to his leadership, regardless of who issues it, although the choice of weapons is left to him. In Delane's case, Pirate Lord Crab opted for a bare hands contest, a highly unusual choice. It has been suggested that Crab saw Delane as a weak target due to his albinism, unworthy of a Pirate Lord's personal attention. It is possible that Crab intended to give Delane a beating rather than kill him outright. If so, it was a fatal act of mercy. Footage of the fight shot by onlookers shows Delane deftly evading Crab's heavy blows, allowing the larger man to tire himself out before delivering a sudden jab to Crab's eye. Delane then battered Crab into submission, continuing to pummel the body until it was unrecognizable. The Kumo crew immediately split, dividing itself into those who saw Delane as a legitimate leader and those who refused to follow an unproven youth. The rift was soon closed, however, as Delane proved himself as capable a leader as he was a fighter. It became clear that Delane intended to establish not only his own reputation, but that of the crew. From then on, Delane crushed any dissent with the same uncompromising brutality he had shown to Crab. He took a zero-tolerance approach to the petty squabbles that had previously paralyzed the Kumo crew, and in doing so, turned what had been an anarchic band of opportunists into a lethally effective raiding force. United in purpose and more organized than ever before, the Kumo crew quickly became the terror of the Pegasi sector, absorbing lesser pirate gangs, raiding civilian stations with impunity, and taking over corporate facilities. In Delane's early years of leadership, many rival pirate lords demanded the right to one-on-one -on -one combat, each of them convinced that they would be the one to strike him down and take over his enviable criminal empire. Delane met each challenger in turn, agreed to their choice of weapons, and promptly dispatched them. After the death of Pirate Lord Horvath, who Delane strangled with his own razor whip, there were no further challenges. Delane and his Kumo crew rule by fear, but they operate according to strict rules. If a settlement in Kumo territory has paid its tribute, any Kumo pirate foolish enough to raid it risks being stripped of his rank, his crew, his possessions, his skin, and his life, according to the severity of the offense. These are the infamous five strippings, instigated by Delane as a standard punishment across Kumo territory. <laughs> 